Welcome to St. John Vianney Roman Catholic Church. Today is the 23rd Sunday of Ordinary Time. Today's Mass intention is for the people of St. John Vianney. Please stand. You are just, O oh Lord, and your judgment is right. Treat your servant in accordance with your merciful love. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you, son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt 
but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be, are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, 
Take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just a brief announcement for this Sunday. Um, on September 26th, the Wisconsin bishops have come to a consensus that the dispensation for the faithful, for the obligation to assist at Holy Mass is going to be lifted. So there's conditions that go along with that because things are still not over and still in the mix. So just keep your ear to the ground because Father Paul will be sending out a flock note email to everybody as well as a letter just describing what this means. And for your friends and family who may be asking you, you can explain to them as well that they're trying to get people back to church to worship and adore our Lord together as God's family. So just to be attentive to that as the weeks go on. And thanks be to God that we can do this. So in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Whatever other commandments there may be, are some you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love is the fulfillment of the law. We live in an interesting culture that today sees liberty or freedom as opposed to law. This storm has kind of been brewing over the last couple hundred years, but today we see it on full display when we turn on the news or the radio. And we see that people have an understanding that I will express my freedom by breaking the law. I will show how free I am by rebelling by sinning, and that the law is, it oppresses me. It doesn't allow me to truly be free. And this is not really anyone, part, anyone in particular's fault, but this is just where our culture is at today, that the commandments, the law, seems to be a hindrance to our freedom. And how do we understand this as, as people of faith? Because when we come to church, when we study the life of the God-made man, Jesus Christ, we see a different version of freedom which is put forth. St. Paul says that it was for freedom that Christ set us free. So we have through the eyes of the world, one vision of freedom. And then for us, through the eyes of the faith, another vision of freedom. So how do we work through this? One thing that made it very clear to myself, and I was very appreciative for the experience, was teaching eighth grade religion at my last assignment in Reedsburg. I had the opportunity to be with the eighth graders every day. And to really get a pulse on where they're at, where our culture's at, what they're being formed in. And one day I said, let's talk about freedom. I want you to tell me everything that you think freedom is 
in everything that you think freedom is not. So he just said, throw it all out there. We're going to put it up on the board and we'll clean it up later. But let's come up with a definition. And their definition of freedom was, freedom is the ability to do whatever you want, whenever you want, without any restrictions. Like, okay, fair enough. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you for your definition of freedom. And then we took that and then we examined what is the freedom that Jesus teaches us? Because the world is going to have its own ideas. It always has and it always will. Because they're working from base human nature. What we want, what, we make, what makes us tick. And what does Jesus teach us? And I think in this conversation, he has something to say. Because he was just as human as you and me. But he was just as God, as God is God, which we are not. So when Jesus speaks to us, he shows us and he tells us the fullness of what it means to be human the beauty of what it means to be human and to be united with God perfectly. And the example of perfect freedom that he's given us is the cross. It seems like a contradiction. And in the eyes of the world, Jesus on the cross is the world's greatest failure. Freedom, really? Does he really look free? He has nails in his hands. He has nails in his feet as he hangs on the tree out of love for you and me. Does Jesus really look free? But remember what he said. Nobody takes my life from me, but I lay down my life for you. I call you my friends if you do that which I command you. So the example which Jesus shows us, it's not a freedom from. It's not a freedom from the world. It's not a freedom from laws or commandments. But it's a freedom for. It's a freedom for excellence. A freedom to be able to do God's will. Because Man, though he was, he learned obedience through the things that he suffered. So the, the God made man learned how to be obedient. And listening to the voice of God, speaking to his sacred heart, his divine human heart, he lived perfect freedom by doing what God wanted him to do, by growing in virtue and by showing us what the greatest act of love is, which is laying down one's life for one's God, one's friends, and one's country. So we look to Jesus as our example of true freedom. And we prayed in the collect of the Mass that look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, who you have called by adoption, to that true gift of freedom and an in eternal inheritance. And lastly, an, an interesting thing that I took away, which was very helpful from teaching the eighth grade class, was I asked them, what is your perception of the church? How do you feel about her? What do you think about her? And I gave them an avenue to do this anonymously so they could say whatever they wanted to. And I was very appreciative to what they had to say. And they said, the church always tells us no. The church does not want us to have fun, to enjoy life. And I was a little surprised but not surprised at, at how they reacted. Because when the world looks upon the church and her teachings, she sees someone who will oppress us, 
who will tell us no. But when we look at the church as our mother and our teacher through the eyes of faith, we see someone who guides us and in particular ways tells us no so that we can say yes to something greater, to the fullness of what God calls us to. And just as if you like watching sports, if no one ever followed the rules, the game wouldn't go anywhere because you'd constantly be getting red flags or fouls, and it just wouldn't work. But we know that when people play by the rules, you have a great game. You have good sportsmanship and a great victory, and you know that you did well. The same with the reality of, of life. The church showing us the way through her teachings as a mother, as a teacher, shows us how to live life well, to experience the greatest amount of happiness. Even though love takes work, love takes sacrifice, that effort that we can do following the church, following God's plan, leads to the greatest amount of happiness in the end for us here on the face of this earth and in heaven for all eternity. So we take the perspective of faith when we look at the church and we see something beautiful, we see something great, and we see the pathway ultimately to eternal life. And lastly, tomorrow we celebrate as a nation Labor Day. And just to think of St. Joseph and the Holy Family teaching our Lord how to make a living, how to be a carpenter, to work with his hands and find dignity and enjoyment in work. As we celebrate the ability to provide for our own livelihoods, to build a greater good society, to think of the Holy Family and the fact that not even our Lord was exempt from an honest day's work, a good day's work, which led to a good night's rest. So we call upon the Holy Family to watch over and protect our families and especially all places of work, that it leads to a greater human flourishing and a greater finding of our Christian dignity in working for the kingdom of heaven. May Almighty God bless us and our families, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, was suffered, death, and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring our prayers and the deepest longings of our hearts to the altar of God, that they may arise on high like incense in his divine sight. For the church, that we may reach out to our neighbors in reconciling with God and each other. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, may we always support and encourage those seeking a conversion of heart toward the mercy of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those dealing with the effects of destructive weather, forest fires, and civil unrest, may they find courage and strength to endure. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are unemployed and those struggling to find full employment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a swift end to the pandemic and restitution for those seriously affected, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and holy marriages, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and suffering of our parish, their families and caregivers, especially Mike Teeley, Jerry Kauchik, Kay Burdick, Jane Weber, and Weston and Theo Marshall, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who protect our country and community, for all health care workers in hospitals, clinics, and nursing homes, may they ease their burdens and bring comfort to all in their care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For whom this Mass is offered, the people of St. John Vianney, and for the silent intentions of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through our prayers and deeds, the light of Christ may overcome the darkness of evil in our world, our families, and our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you so loved the world 
that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life in the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With you, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For the distribution of Holy Communion, we will begin distributing on the west side of the church with Father Peter, who will be at front in the center, and I will be at the back half in the center. When you come forward with your masks on, as a rule, when the person in front of you is receiving our Lord, that is the time when you should remove your mask. Please process down the center of the center aisle. And when we are concluded with the west side of the church, then we'll move to the east side. And now we'll pray an act of spiritual communion for the faithful joining us from home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant that your fa faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Thank you to Sue and Megan for holy music and for Sean and Gabe for serving and reading. And thank you for braving the storm and coming to Holy Mass. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. God, we praise you, God, we bless you.